For Krama Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is researcher and political analyst, Professor Raymond Sadna, to discuss his column titled, South Africa Faces Crisis on Multiple Fronts, Threatening the Democratic Project and Our Constitutional Values. Professor, you speak of the presidency of Cyril Ramaphosa as drifting, referring to his incorporating and continuing uh, to allow uh, to remain in office many of the West performers and allegedly corrupt people from the Zuma era. But would he not risk great instability if he moved against these people, some of whom enjoy considerable support? You know, you have a choice between uh, removing people who may have support and who may use that support uh, to undermine you if you remove them, gathering people who are dissatisfied, they may rally against the presidency of Ramaphosa and the present leadership. On the other hand, you keep them in and they don't do the work properly, they may steal uh, and then the state doesn't have the resources to fulfill its constitutional obligations. Now, it is said that Ramaphosa plays the long game, that he waits for the right moment to do things and all of that. But when you have people in place who have been fingered by the Zondro Commission and a number of other reasons why they may well face prosecution, it makes people uh, distrustful and disrespectful of the government of the day when they see people in these positions who have already proven themselves to be untrustworthy. Secondly, if they don't perform, even from an ANC point of view, it means they are likely to do very badly in the next elections because, because already things are in many ways worse than they were in the first years after 1994, when some progress was made. So my feeling is that it doesn't pay to uh, keep dead wood there and crooked wood there. And I think if, why I use the word drifting is that it's indecisive. You need to be prepared to make decisions which will not make some people pleased. You have to decide what is the right thing to do, what is the best thing for the country, not just the unity of the ANC. Unity of the ANC is not a patriotic thing. It's not a thing for the country. That is an ANC matter, how unified the ANC is. That is not a matter affecting the country as a whole. The country as a whole wants clean government and it wants leaders that it respects. And the crisis you refer to now relates to people's living conditions and the pervasiveness of violence and criminality. Is it correct then to ignore the real financial challenges our country faces in providing what it does for its citizens? And also, Professor, the violence and crime you refer to are surely not primarily uh, political questions, but part of the history and ongoing practices in communities and also in the business world? First of all, regarding the resources, the financial uh, capacity of the country, a lot of states have been hard hit during COVID. And in South Africa, a lot of people have lost their jobs because businesses have themselves been hard hit. And you've seen changes. If you walk around, Uh, shopping malls, you'll see empty shops. Some of these shops that have disappeared were actually well-known brands. Um, And so there is a crunch which is affected by people in all spheres of life. There was little funding for research. Now there's much less than there was after COVID. So there is a real financial crunch which is an objective thing. However, it's made worse in South Africa because a lot of the funds that were available have been stolen. We know 
that a lot of the funds put aside for COVID were actually misappropriated, that companies that had no experience in providing medical equipment were given tenders. They then farmed out a provision to some other company, which gave it to them, say, for seven rand each. They then sold it to the state for like 27 rand each and made huge, the, these millions of money that appear to have been stolen during COVID. But we know long before that, during the Zuma era, but before the Zuma era, we know that Bosasa's activities started long before the Zuma era and that uh, corruption has uh, meant that a lot of things that the state provides costs the taxpayer much more than it ought to cost because they are paying extra money for bribes or corruption. On the violence, you are correct that the violence in South Africa is not just a political thing. I think it is a political thing in the sense that inside the ANC, initially it was mainly in KZN, but now it's in other parts of the country. People are killing one another to get positions. So that there's been killing within the ANC probably for 10 or more years. Previously, it was between ANC, UDF, and Inkata, but some of those people, the so-called warlords, were drawn into the ANC. So they were, so you've got this militaristic element, especially in KZN, but you've got killings elsewhere. But violence is a part of South African life, but it's not just South Africa. Uh, there's a lot of violence everywhere in the world, and it's got to do with the way people are brought up, especially men. Like when I grew up as a young boy, I didn't admire scholarship. I didn't dream of becoming a professor. I didn't dream of writing articles and books. I wanted to be a rough, tough rugby player. And a lot of people in South Africa uh, place more value on being tough and having boys grow up to be tough. I remember at my school, one day, the captain of the UCT rugby club came to speak at the school. And he said, your studies are important, but rugby is the main thing. And we all clapped like mad. I was like that myself. I, you know, young boys, like to conform. They don't want to be different from the others. And that's one of the reasons why people are hostile to gays and lesbians, because they like everyone to be the same. Now, we have to break that. We have to spread a culture of the value of being gentle, of respectful to all human beings, to not cause harm to any other human being. When you do harm to another by hitting a, that person or killing that person, you are treating a human being as a thing, an object that you can harm or do away with. Now we must end that because our constitution's first sentence is about dignity and we have to respect human dignity and human life. And lastly, Professor, you attack uh, our government for refusing to compensate Nigeria for attacks on Nigerians uh, living in our country. But this seems to be part of your wider reluctance uh, to accept reasons behind attacks on foreign nationals. Are they not taking jobs that should uh, first belong to South Africans? Well, this thing of unemployment and how people get jobs is a very complex thing. And I don't think the question of foreign nationals is really the bigger picture. The sort of jobs that foreign nationals tend to hold are very often the jobs that South Africans don't want, like jobs where people work long hours, like at restaurants. People who are from South Africa 
don't want to work at dinner time. They want to be with their family. And it's people who are desperate, who've often come here without their family, who are prepared to work those long hours because they need the job no matter what. And I think that is the reason why you will find a predominance of people from places like Zimbabwe in the entertainment restaurant type industry because the conditions of work are very hard, very long. They are not like difficult, but the hours are long. They're inconvenient times to work. And I think if you examine the places where foreign nationals are located, most of them are not jobs which are very popular with South Africans. Otherwise, you know, you, you won't see a lot of people uh, turned away at those restaurants who are South Africans. Uh, if you do a survey, my guess is that the South Africans who apply, if they are competent, they'll get the job. So I think it's a red herring. And I think it is very unfortunate that they're introducing a sort of job reservation, which will exclude people from a number of professions. I've seen that even attorneys who are foreign nationals may be not allowed to practice anymore. The Legal Practices Council has got some uh, resolution about it. I think this is something shameful that should should not be happening in a democratic South Africa. There was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's Polity about his column titled South Africa Faces Crisis on Multiple Fronts Threatening the Democratic Project and Our Constitutional Values.